Hi Gemini and welcome back to your monthly reading. This is for April 2023. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're a continued subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you guys being here, supporting the channel uh, and supporting my work. Um, I'm here to help you uh, and we can he be here for each other to grow, to learn, to listen um, and to support. Today's reading is going to be a uh, focus on the 12th house for Gemini. 12th house is the house, <clears throat> excuse me, the house of the hidden. Um, what needs to come out of shadow? What needs to be revealed? What is coming up for you, Gemini, this month where <clears throat> you may have kept something under lock and key for a very long time and it's time to open the cupboard? So, if you haven't already seen the video I made yesterday, which is an unboxing video about this particular deck called the Enchanted Tarot, I did do an unboxing <clears throat> and it is a brand new deck. This deck is very large. You can see here with the, you know, the width of my hand or the length of my hand here, the cards are very long. So I'm not going to be able to shuffle them how I normally shuffle them. So this reading is going to be a little different as well in the way that I shuffle the cards as well as the spread. I'm only going to be using three cards this month and an overarching energy because the cards are quite large. And also just to sort of simplify things a little bit because it is a new deck. So I am going to read the cards on one hand how I'd normally read tarot and my version and my way of reading tarot. And then we're going to reread by visiting the book um, just because it is a new deck. And I like to sort of look at different perspectives on the different cards and see what the author has to say in regard to the artwork. So let's get into it, Gemini. What needs to come out of the closet this month? What if, uh, needs to be revealed or what is going to be illuminated for you this month? It's a bit of a tricky one because we do have an eclipse uh, this month, which will be on April 20. Um, <clears throat> Uh, which is a lunar eclipse in Aries and Taurus. People are saying it's a second eclipse in Aries, but it's actually a hybrid uh, eclipse. So <clears throat> we're talking about revealing the hidden. It might actually be hidden from you. We'll see what, ha what that looks like. I'm also just going to split the deck like so, just so you know that I'm not premeditating any cards before the video. And that whatever comes out, I have no idea what's going to come out. So again, uh, three cards, past, present and future. The bottom of the deck will be the overarching energy. Let's start with the first card in the center, which is the present energy. We have the lovers, which is Gemini. <laughs> this is really good. In the past energy, wow, you have the Ace of Swords. Okay. And in the future energy, we have the Emperor. Okay, now this is Mars energy. Mars is in Cancer at the moment, um, so it could also indicate how you're approaching your conversations and regaining that control. Bottom of the deck, we have the Two of Swords. Okay, this is really interesting because this was the outcome card for the previous reading. Moon in Libra. Alrighty. So what am I seeing here? Um, so what needs to be revealed? I think there's a lot of truth that needs to be revealed this month um, coming out of shadow. Um, you know, not mincing words anymore, not sort of protecting, you know, anybody. I think it's about, you know, the self-preservation is here on the, the overarching energy. But in the past, I think, you know, there's a new sort of, start for you here you may have started a new pursuit you may have started reading uh, a new book you may have started um you know hitting that reset button in terms of your mental health you know maybe there was that ten of swords energy that you had to get out of the system at the beginning of or the end of the last zodiacal year and we started the new zodiacal year in march um and then in april here this is you know, where you're leading off from. You're leading off from a new project or a new concept, uh, a new way of thinking even. Um, because again, the, the cards before this always predict what's happening in the current energy. This is sitting in your past energy. So I feel in March, there was a new start here for you in terms of your outlook. And again, mental health, working on the self, 
getting clarity and this is a victory for you you know being able to draw that sort of truth integrity honesty um, and taking on um, new pursuits from a cerebral standpoint from an intellectual standpoint but also first and foremost I think mental health is really important working on the self you know identifying what that looks like and and hitting that reset button really important coming out of shadow is yourself okay this is the lovers your true identity being able to choose you know the option of choice but also true love what is really true to you and what if you're single and you're having to choose between two people you know sometimes people choose people for convenience or they choose them because of aesthetic or they choose them they choose them for the, the wrong reason you know the lovers card is about true love you know regardless of what's being tempted or what may be, you know, what's happening over the fence, what are the Joneses doing or what is that person doing in their relationship? This is about looking in your own garden and harvesting your own, you know, sense of romance and love and connection with someone who you truly are connected to and what defines true love. True love is unconditional. There are no conditions. It's unconditional. People make mistakes, <clears throat> people grow, they change, they evolve. And if you've made a commitment to someone or you're in a marriage or even, it's about seeing it through to the end. You know, that, that classic vow, till death do us part. Now, of course, I'm not making excuses for anybody here who is in an abusive relationship or something violent. Of course not. But there are foibles within people and we need to accept those things with an open heart. Tell people how you feel, but at the same time, if you truly love someone, you'll let it go. You know, column A, column B. What's really important in situations? And that's about coming out of shadow. That's about, you know, looking at other people's shadow as well. And being in two minds about that, that Libra moon energy, which is the overarching in the third eye, I feel really strongly here, you know, you might be just sort of sitting there and going, okay, this is an energy of peace and self-preservation, but it's also about creating stability, not rocking the boat. Because the outcome card here is the emperor, and this is an energy of, restor you know, um, laws of society, but it's also a card of stability and control. You know, being in control of your life is really powerful. Being in control of where you're at right now, based on the choices, <clears throat> excuse me, the choices that you're making. Because Lover's card is not just Major Arcana Gemini. Lover's card is also the card of choice. We are governed, governance, emperor, governed. We are governed by the choices we make. Make no mistake. That is a fact. So if we are stead if we are true and we stay, you know, aligned with what is going to bring us the most stability, what is going to, you know, create roots and foundation for our future, that is gaining authority over our own choices, having a sense of authority in our own lives and creating stability within society and how we integrate ourselves within society. What does that look like? Unfortunately, we don't often get to just be at home and exist without society. Society is the fabric of what keeps our worlds from falling apart. You know, the laws and regulations of certain things keep keeps law and order keeps things in place <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so it is about solidifying that with clear decision making good mental health because when we have good mental mental health we make clear decisions choices about romantic partners or just people in general choosing choosing to be Choosing to have the right company, you know, you are judged by the company you keep or you will, you will 
you know, you, you, are, you become the company that you keep as well. So whoever you decide to hang out with, you're going to become that, you know. Um, that's a really valuable lesson. So choose your friends wisely. Choose your company wisely. Choose your partners wisely. That sort of thing. And then the outcome again is gaining a sense of authority in your own life. <clears throat> Integrating yourself into a society that provides stability and structure. The overarching energy is the moon in Libra, which is the two of swords. <clears throat> and this is about peace. Peace being restored. Self-preservation. Not going off the deep end. Just staying calm, balanced, and listening to your higher self, listening to the moon, your intuition. The best choices are the choices when you listen to your higher self. You're not making rash decisions, fast decisions, silly decisions. You're making decisions based on balance and coming from a calm, peaceful state of mind. Because in the past here as well, you've already, you've already done this. You're going from an ace to a two here as well, which is also progressive. So the overarching energy is an energy of peace and it is an energy of balance, which is really good. So how does this relate to the 11th house? Well, I think it's a, an energy of discernment with groups and networking, friends, the global village, the collective, staying balanced in your own truth, staying balanced in your own sense of intuition, creating a sense of order within society, Gemini being those choices, having those having to make those decisions, but making those decisions coming from a place of clarity and a sense of self and good mental health. It's good reading. So that's my version. Let's have a look at what the book has to say because this is a new deck and I want to honour what the author has said. So I don't normally read from the book when I read tarot, but because, again, this is a new deck and a new set of cards... Um, what do you guys think of the lover's card? It's really quite beautiful. All right. Let's start from the beginning. Ace of Swords. It's in the past energy. What does the Ace of Swords say in the book? It says, Force. I'll hold the card up while I read it. The quick read is, you need to identify the long-term goals and major principles that will enable you to make your life a statement of your personality. Open a channel to sacred wisdom. Triumph over adversity and ignorance. Wow. That's really powerful. That's really powerful because that's definitely something I, I'm connecting with. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? <clears throat> Triumph over adversity and ignorance. Well, I had to get over something that was quite ignorant or a person that was quite ignorant about their approach to, to tarot and their approach to teaching and their approach to certain things. So, and then getting out of that energy, identifying with long-term goals and major principles that would enable you to make your life a statement of your own personality. And that's what's really important when you have clear decision-making as well and truth and integrity. It's a statement about who you are and your identity. And a reflection, decisions are reflections based on your own personality. Very powerful message. See, it does pay to read from the book a few times, depending on what the, what the deck is. You know, you might have new messages that come through with different interpretations. The beauty of tarot. Let's read the six of saw, uh, six, the lovers, number six. <clears throat> In this book, it is labelled Attraction. The quick message is, 
you need to choose wisely between two or more equally attractive allurements. It doesn't say people, it just says allurements. You will only choose wisely if you feel satisfied with who and what you are right now. Get in touch with that, what it is you are truly attracted to you. So what is attractive to you right now? What is most attractive to you right now? Is it solitude? Is it work? Is it a hobby? Is it a person? Is it money? What's attractive to you right now? Because that's going to be an indication of who you are right now and where you're at right now as, as Gemini. The outcome is the Emperor, which is card number four, and that's about achievement. This is really good. You need to be recognised as a strong, imposing figure of unquestioned achievement and authority. Focus your attention completely on your goal. You must not reveal your real plans, feelings or weaknesses. Status is vital. Wow. So where do you sit in your status? Where do you feel you belong in groups and networking and socialising and all that sort of thing? It's interesting. Status is vital. Wow. I love that. I love that. It's very powerful. Clarity, choices, stability, status, authority, unquestionable. Two of Swords is the overarching energy. Let's read that from the book. And it indicates here it's the card of balance. So I'm going to hold that up as well so you can see the artwork again. And it says, you need to take a break from your usual way of thinking, seeing and doing to consider alternative ideas and viewpoints. Rest and relaxation are important now. Be diplomatic, compromise or let things stand as they are. So, you know, it's making decisions and choices, but sometimes it's also about reprieve. You know, recognising what it all is and either just letting it be or being diplomatic and saying, look, I need to take some time out right now. I can't talk on the phone right now. I need to take a day off work right now. I can't come to that event right now. <laughs> I, whatever it is that you need to do, just say no. I can't right now. And that's okay. Because when you're rested and you're restored, you can do all these other things successfully. And that's really important. It's not about being you know, knocking yourself out in order to achieve something. It's about resting your mind in order to come back to do your very best. When you do return to the fold, when you do return to work, when you do return to, you know, socializing or coming out of shadow, you're in good form. And that's a good thing. It's not, you're not a failure. You're not, um, you know, letting anybody down it's just a case of we need to do that sometimes i need to do that sometimes i'm a gemini so this is also <laughs> a reading for myself um but what do you think guys i know a lot of you are gemini's gemini moons gemini sun gemini rising um take time out and then when you come back you'll be in a really really good place I hope you enjoyed your reading this month, Gemini, April 2023. I hope it's a good month for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for subscribing and being so welcoming and supportive of the work, of the website, of the channel and of each other. It's, we're a community. I know that you do leave comments from time to time, but let me know how, what you thought of the reading. Let me know what you thought of the artwork and the cards and the deck that I used this month. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Always like, comment, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Have a great month, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.